a sneaking suspicion that I have that this story has been planted by not allies of Penny Morden, actually, but allies of Suella Bravman and potentially even <laughs> Kemi Badenoch. Now, this is all very com- conspiracy theory and complex, yep. but mm-hmm. the idea being that you put a moderate like Penny Morden in for a short period, okay, and she mm-hmm. takes the party into the election. They then lose still, but those people still keep their seats because they're not losing 300, 200 seats. Now Penny, and, now Penny Morden's out the way. Then Penny Morden's out the way. They yep. tried the moderate, the moderates failed, and then the doors open for somebody on the right to take over. Sure. Okay, well, moving to Westminster, uh, reporting this morning about the Tory leadership, reporting that groups of right-wing Tory MP- MPs reckon it's time to ditch Rishi Sunak and get Penny Mordaunt in to lead the party in time for the next election, leading me to the... I guess my question here is, am I losing my gosh darn mind? <laughs> I, I was reading the story this morning too and thinking the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I can't keep track of all the different plotting stories Mm -hmm. that I've had to read or cover over the last three months or so. I think it's just worth, before we go into the Penny Morden stuff, just recapping why this has happened. Sure. So it's been another torrid week for Rishi Sunak. At the beginning of the week, Lee Anderson, the former deputy chairman of the party, defected to reform, which is basically the worst nightmare for the Tories because reform are, are... inching up in the polls, percentage by percentage. Uh, there are talk, There's talk about Anderson being the first of several MPs potentially to defect. This feels very much like 2015 when, mm-hmm. when Nigel Farage got two Tory MPs to defect to UKIP. So that was really... Uh, That was really rankling with Tory MPs. And I think there was a bit of tension in number 10 about it all as well. There were reports that Liam Booth Smith, Rishi Sunak's chief of staff, had let it be known privately that he had cautioned against removing the whip from Anderson because Anderson was um, suspended over his comments about Steve Kahn. Of course. Yeah, he he talked talked about him handing over London to his Islamist friends, didn't he? Absolutely. So there's a a bit bit of significant unhappiness, in fact, around Anderson and also some question marks about the PM's judgment in making him deputy chair in the first place, given he was already seen as a bit of a flight risk. Then on top of that, you had the Frank Hester Mm -hmm. debacle where a Tory donor was found to have made some very um, inappropriate and frankly racist remarks about Diane Abbott. Yeah. Um, and then to cap it all off, the budget, which you know saw a, a significant cut to national insurance, has failed to shift the dial. I mean, am I, so, yeah. am I imagining this, or did I see a poll yesterday that put the Tories under twenty percent? I mean, the, the polls are getting worse. The the aggregate polling now is suggesting that the Tories are on about twenty four percent, Labour yeah. on forty three. And if you split that by seats at the next election. Labour on course for about 400 seats, and the Tories are down to about 120 seats. So we're talking about real wipeout territory. So this is why we're reading on the front pages today about Penny Morden, Mm -hmm. and it's because in their desperation, um, and some might say that desperation is driving them to increasingly drastic thoughts, um, Tory right-wing MPs are talking, apparently, to moderate MPs about getting rid of Sudak and coronating Penny Mordaunt. Mm-hmm. Now, there is actually... This This actually has been running for some time. The genesis of this um, actually started about two months ago. There was um, somebody who isn't, a, isn't an MP but has worked on campaigning for Boris Johnson and his trust who was putting it about Westminster that uh, what they should do is they should get rid of Sunak, put Morden in, and then there would be a contract with the people. That's what it was being described as, where she would she would take over promising to have an election within 100 days. Right. And it didn't get a lot of... Um, credit at the time but clearly as the polls are going against the Tories and these incidences are happening with growing frequency some MPs are starting to think well maybe she is the only solution Uh, maybe she can stem the bleeding well Uh, I mean mean, mad as it seems and I'm not going to pretend it doesn't seem mad mm. I suppose there's a perfectly reasonable chance that she wouldn't do any worse than Rishi Sunak in the coming election right no I think that is the the conclusion of some MPs Mm. is how could we get worse than where we are currently. Yeah. Um, the the things I would say about Penny Morden is she does have large name recognition. And it, and it may seem a bit simple to say, but just the fact that she played such a prominent role in the King's coronation, sure. lots of people recognise her. And, and I think in Westminster, we try to convince ourselves that 
uh, everyone's paying attention to the ins and the daily ins and outs of policy making and announcements. The reality is most people, I don't think, pay that much attention, but mm. they do They do form initial reactions to people. And they decide quite quickly whether they like them or dislike them. And I think Penny Morden, lots of the polling suggests she would be quite popular and she may actually be quite challenging for, for Starmer. She is mm. actually quite impressive in the House of Commons. Um, the flip side to that, of course, is that um, the public will probably think, how, are they, how on earth are we having yet another prime minister yeah. who we haven't elected free be free before the, so since the last election yeah. um and uh, and the reality is that sh she won't really be able to do much i mean there's no money left to spend because jeremy hunt's just spent it on uh, the latest installment of tax cuts and can anybody really turn around such a goal from the polls? I, I just don't think it's possible. Well, I mean, particularly if it would involve her, what, coming in in order to, to hold an election, which she would expect to lose, yes. albeit not as badly as Rishi Sunak would have lost, but still, so she still ends up with, what, five years as the leader of an opposition yeah. that doesn't know who it is, that is harried by reform, might not be such a great gig anyway. Yeah, and now there is a school of thought here, actually, about this story that's emerging, about Tory right-wing MPs, because... I, there is a sneaking suspicion that I have that this story has been planted by not allies of Penny Morden, actually, but allies of Suella Bravman and potentially even <laughs> Kemi Badenoch. Now, this is all very com conspiracy theory and complex, yep. but mm -hmm. the idea being that you put a moderate like Penny Morden in for a short period, okay, and she takes mm -hmm. the party into the election. They then lose still, but those people still keep their seats because they're not losing 300, 200 seats. Now Penny, and, now Penny Morden's out the way. Then Penny Morden's out the way. They yep. tried the moderate, the moderates failed, and then the doors open for somebody on the right to take over. Oh, it'd be nice if they all just gave this much thought and planning to actually running the country, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> look, let's, while, I've, while I've got you, uh, on the Frank Hester thing, a lot of people have been talking about, we were talking fact early, in fact earlier, about how remarkable and quite shocking it seemed during Prime Minister's questions when everybody was talking about Diane Abbott and she kept standing up wanting to ask a question and wasn't allowed to, which meant she was the focus of PMQs, was there, but wasn't allowed to say anything. What, I mean, in a, on a purely sort of technical protocol level, why did that happen? So the, the answer to that is that the way the process works for selecting questions at PMQs is that the questions and who is able to ask them is decided beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I think it's either, you know, the night before or a few hours all, before. All of them or most well, of them? Well, this is the question. Right. So so that's the that's the response from the Speaker's office was that he'd already allocated questions and they'd run out of time to, to call Abbott. Now, some people on the Labour backbenches and, in fact, even some Conservatives saying, when you are the speaker, sometimes you have to adapt to circumstance and changing circumstance. I feel, and, like, I feel like Lindsay Hall has made that that argument yeah, quite recently. Well, yeah. yes, quite. <laughs> yeah. So um, there is quite a lot of grumbling going on behind mm. the scenes. He, Lin, Lindsay Hall's had a bit of a bad run of late, and I think this was probably a mistake. He probably should have reacted to the situation and realised that the, the sight of lots of male politicians talking on behalf of Diane Abbott while she sat, sat there desperately trying mm. to make her voice heard really doesn't chime well with, with viewers or, or frankly, MPs. What's, um, what's up with Diane Abbott? Is there any chance, do you think, she'll get the Labour whip back? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, another colleague of hers, Andy MacDonald, who was suspended from Labour because he sang um, the chant from the river to the sea on, mm -hmm. a, on a pro-Palestine protest, he has just had the whip reinstated. Mm. But his suspension has been far shorter than Diane Abbott's. She's actually been suspended for 10 months. It's now, long time, yeah. It is long time. Now, there is growing pressure within the Labour Party, especially after this incident involving the Conservative donor, uh, for her to have the whip reinstated. I'm not entirely clear what's going on with the Labour investigation, but I know certainly a few months ago there was a suspicion on the left of the party that what the party was trying to do with Abbott was run the clock down towards the election because mm. if you're suspended as an MP, you, obviously can't, you can't, stand. can't stand as a candidate. Yeah. So it will be interesting. I think the calls for her to be reinstated will grow um, and I think Keir Starmer probably needs to make a decision or rather he would say that national ruling executive needs to make a decision um, in the next few weeks. Otherwise, I think there will be more questions for them. Finally, before I let you go, uh, back on back on Frank Hester, mm. is that 
is that over? Is that done? Or do you think that's going to keep causing problems? No, that will keep causing problems. Uh, that has been quite a sore point this week for the Conservatives. And, and the reason why it will continue to be is because the Conservative Party is currently in discussions with Hester about another £5 million pounds donation. Mm-hmm. And it couldn't have come at worse time for them because... The Conservatives are trying to fill their war chest for the election. Yeah. They they intend to raise huge amounts of money for that election. It's their only chance of reducing that polling gulf between them and Labour. Yeah. There's been li- uh, a lift on the, the spending caps. For, for So they need all the money they can get. And as we know in politics... Um, you know, election funding is a grubby business anyway and parties tend to do everything they possibly can to keep hold of money. Well, maybe they can give him back his 10 and then he can give them five and everybody wins. Who knows? Big political news of the morning, new First Minister of Wales, or imminently. Yes, imminently. So this morning, uh, Vaughan Gething has been announced as the new leader of Welsh Labour. That's because Mark Drayford, who was who's been in post as first minister since 2018, uh, decided to step down just before Christmas. Um, and this is a big moment. Um, Vaughan Gething is becoming the first black leader of Wales, and not mm. just Wales, but the first black leader in Europe. So Labour have pointed out that this, for them, is a significant moment. And, and I think it's just re- worth reflecting briefly that um, at a time when we've had a lot of rows in politics about racism in Britain, I think it's worth pointing out that, A, we now have um, a black leader in Wales. We also have a British Muslim as the first uh, as the first minister in Scotland, and mm-hmm. we have a British Indian leading as UK prime minister. So yeah. it, is a, it is a big moment, I think, for Britain. Um, Geffing is an interesting character. I actually knew him a bit uh, a few years ago when I was working in Cardiff as a reporter. He's... Um, He's seen as quite a competent minister. He previously was health minister during the pandemic. And bef- and after that, he was he served as the economy minister. But um, it's an interesting one because the Welsh Labour leadership contest has been mired in a bit of controversy and it has actually largely been around Geffing. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because... Um, he, it was found, um, had accepted a £200,000 donation mm-hmm. from a company whose owner had uh, twice been found to have illegally dumped waste in mm. Wales. So that's not great for a Labour leader, especially given the party's green credentials and the the importance that he and Labour have attached to you know, the green transition. So that's caused quite a lot of tension within the Assembly, actually, with, within Assembly members, because they feel that it's a bit grubby uh, it's a very large donation for Welsh politics. So it'll be interesting to see now he comes in whether he can bring the party mm. back together because there has been some tension there. I mean, a party leader being in trouble over donations. Imagine such a thing. Uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit, a little bit more a little, a little bit later. Um, they've got the, 20, the controversial 20 mile an hour speed limits across Wales coming in, right? That, exactly. Is that going to be a that's going to be a big sort of uh, big test to the new first minister? Yes, definitely. So he's probably going to be formally approved as First Minister uh, on Wednesday, I think. But before that, uh, on Monday, the enforcement of these new 20 mile per hour limits are coming in. And I think what we can expect is that the Conservatives, both in Wales and in Westminster, will be will be attempting to use the the public backlash against that Mm -hmm. um, to to hit Geffing over the head with. I, I, I suspect very strongly that we'll probably see a few announcements over the next few days on on that and what maybe the Conservatives are doing in England. Yeah. 